better no eh? so welcome everyone to our another session of uh, travel diaries in today's session we will have arun kalyanpur and shila kalyanpur taking us down under through australia and new zealand so i will hand over the you know the session to arun mam and shila pachi hello everyone arun and shila here आम्मी आज ही ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड न्यूजीलैंड बदल थोड़े चुलोन जे सती एंड एज आई ऑलरेडी सेड आई एम स्कैर्ड बिकॉज फ्यू ऑफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी बीन देर आई कैंट ब्लफ सो टू स्टार्ट विथ आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू हैव सम सॉर्ट ऑफ ए डिस्क्लेमर यू नो वी एक्चुअली बोथ ऑफ अस हैव जस्ट क्रॉस थर्टी फाइव इयर्स um in fact some time back or some time back so we you know while presenting and while hunting for different windows if we fumble please excuse us and uh, please be patient with us so that is the first disclaimer second um i cannot remember the names so i'll keep referring to sheila and third is uh, um you know i'll try to share i'll try to share as fast as possible but uh, i have noticed that uh, sometimes you know while switching from window to window it takes some time so these are the all the uh, disclaimers rather so now um let us start i can start sharing now okay this the screen na huh? ha uh, but uh, all windows here anyway खे एक दिस्त की संगता ओके ओके एक मिनट वही दिस्ता ओके बट ऑल विंडो शेयरिंग आई एम नॉट शुअर बट ओके आई शेयर वन मोर विंडो वही तो विंडोज एक्सप्लोर दिस्ता सर Can you see? Nah, so to unshare ko nu, parat share kari all windows, okay? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, all windows mo niya na, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Kala ay lent ay ana tak. To kancha options yata sa ti. Okay. Um. No, I I can see only uh, basic and advanced mo no. and then it shows the windows only that is with the share uh, i had this uh, yesterday i had that button where i could share all windows ne and this kana okay let me try again stop sharing a map this la why no but okay then i'll share every time okay bye uh, every application share kar bye okay okay can you see the map bye this ta okay okay yeah so uh, the background is something like this you know we as a family are very fond of traveling even when preeti was 4 years old we started uh, traveling in india in trains and buses and then um, when we came to us of course we enjoyed traveling and when she got married luckily we found kedar kodikal so we 
continued traveling. All of us together, sometimes even Keda's parents, or sometimes we by ourselves. Now I am a consultant now. So uh, initially I was working for Varian Medical Systems for about eight years. That time it was a little difficult to travel, uh, to spare time for travel. It had come down at that, that time. But after that, for last about seven, eight years, I'm on my own. So what we do generally is when my one project is done and before I start the next project, we always prefer to travel. Visit various places in US or how, I mean, Hawaii, UK, UK France, yeah. Belgium, which is uh, Sheila's favorite place. <laughs> and then uh, uh, also, you know, Australia, New Zealand, then Thailand, uh, one can Malaysia, and Bali, Bali, and of course, a lot of places seven in states. India. Seven states. Yeah. So, about uh, three years back, when I finished my pro project, we suddenly discovered that you know we had a lot of vacation weeks and points spending. So, we decided that we'll take a long break. So we took seven months break actually. And as a part of that, we traveled to Australia and New Zealand first. So uh, first um, from San Francisco, we flew to Hawaii. And then from Honolulu, just I'll show it in the map. So we flew from Honolulu to Auckland. Auckland by Hawaiian Airlines. So that is what we'll start with now. Can you see my uh, screen of Auckland uh, pretty or uh, I have to share again. Uh, map this, to, sir. Honolulu to Auckland. Okay, and then I'll share. In Auckland, we stayed at uh, Ramada Suites, and uh, it was right in the middle of uh, downtown. Can you see now? Why? Okay. okay. So I'll start with Auckland pictures and uh, talk about it. And wherever the names need to be mentioned, Sheila will talk. I have to share again, where Preeti? Can you see? Uh, Foot opens, I need. Okay, one minute. There's no way I can share uh, all of them because I'm not getting that. Why? 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 Select all cone open, Kari. So, the conscious pictures, the title picture select, right click on open, you can go from one to the other. Okay. Can you see? Why this time? Okay, so on uh, 4th of October, we flew from. Uh, San Francisco to Honolulu by Hawaiian Airlines and we had a uh, halt there for about five to six hours and after that we took this flight from Honolulu to yeah. Auckland. Oh, you didn't go. I didn't go. I was doing
can you hear me uh, yeah there was some disturbance but i muted the other. okay okay yeah so then we went from uh, auckland to uh, sorry from hawaii to auckland by hawaiian airlines flight and then you know this is the this is from the uh, flight map so as you can see we from honolulu to auckland and it also shows the uh, distance just one minute uh -huh. so it total of about 7200 uh, kilometers and it took us about nine, nine hours, hours to, of flight. Yeah, nine and a half hours. It was a very nice flight. Only problem was both of us being vegetarians. You know, at this Hawaiian Airlines, we could eat only um, pasta and salads. But it was a very nice flight. Then, you know, um, as we approached New Zealand, you can see that these are the places and uh, to start with, we went to Auckland, and from there, we went to Rotorua. Uh, we went... Before you go there, uh, yeah. give some background on two Kalam Sangi Lachiket a technical Hajmitu Visarla. Technical because I'm young, I keep forgetting. Hmm. Okay. Um, no, you were saying uh, because it was a seven month trip back, uh, you were. You... No, no, that I'll speak at the end. Ach, okay. Okay. You're talking about uh, planning in advance, right? Uh, nay, uh, I was telling about, uh, you know, uh, first you had your uh, little vacation in Hawaii and uh, then on your flight to uh, Auckland, which you never do, you took a picture of, um, this is actually a picture you took. Yeah, yeah that's what, uh, this is actually, you know, in front of my uh, seat, that is the TV, uh, the screen that they have, which, Luckily, you know, on that day, uh, I had no idea that I'll be presenting this somewhere. And I normally don't take any pictures of, of all the things, uh, the input from this uh, TV screens in front of you. But I don't know what happened. I just uh, managed to take some pictures, which I'm very happy that I can use it now. So anyway, uh, so this... Um, that, that was our total flight, uh, approximately 7,200 kilometers and nine hours. Then after nine hours, we were nearing, uh, this is the picture I took when we were nearing New okay. Zealand, okay. Auckland. And these are the other places which, I mean, uh, Auckland is here. And we have all these other places which I will talk about later, Rotorua, Tauranga and the other places. And this is when we were landing in Auckland. And this, you know, when we were nearing New Zealand, we were told that there is a law by which the cabin crew is supposed to spray all the disinfectants. So this is the aerostase spraying on our heads. Bags. Overhead bags. Overhead bags as well as overheads. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then we finally landed and Sheila was very happy that finally after nine years she can nine hours she can move around. So this is the entrance to the baggage claim in New Zealand. At Auckland. Mm -hmm. And then after that uh, I mean, in Auckland, we stayed at Ramada Suites, right? Yeah. Ramada Suites. Down, down. And this was the view from our window, which was one of the, I mean, as you can see, you know, that, that's the maximum, sorry. <laughs> that's the maximum uh, traffic they have generally, at least in our uh, area, that was the maximum. It was a main downtown. Yeah. And you know, um, this I have included mainly for uh, Punal, Kushi, and Preeti and Kedar because uh, you know, my uncle Vasant Kale, mom, he stays in Auckland with his family, 
um, actually maybe uh, I can speak one or two sentences about him. He was uh, in uh, Mughal lines. He was a radio officer in the shipping in the you know Bombay um, Makkah or whatever place you go to perform Hajj. That is the line he was working on. He worked on that for nearly 15 years on the same ship. It was known as Mahmadi, SS Mahmadi. And then one day suddenly, while he was uh, traveling, there was a big cyclone and the whole ship turned upside down and broke into pieces in the middle of the ocean. And um, he had to you know, clutch onto a log of wood and he spent 24 hours in the ocean before he was res rescued. So now he is 90. So having gone to Auckland, I just wanted to go there. And this is his uh, son's favorite dog. Max. Max. Uh, I don't know what breed that is, but this was when he was just six weeks old. <laughs> now he is uh, nearly three years and, and he is uh, nearly four and a half feet tall. So, okay, that, that was, yeah. Now this is in front of our <coughs> hotel room. This was the, yeah. <coughs> the Auckland um, needle they call. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this was, yeah. yeah, 339. It was, it's 328. Uh, it's, it's known as Auckland Sky Tower and it is 328 meters tall and there's a restaurant, revolving restaurant at this height. Yeah. At the 222 feet uh, meters level, we have the restaurant there. So then first day we went on uh, a Auckland and surrounding places tour. So one thing we liked about New Zealand is lot of greenery, lot of sheep. farms where they had sheep and lot of cattle farms. So wherever you go, generally you see all the greenery, not many tall buildings or not many buildings even. See, this is the Ramada where we stayed. And then, this is actually the Auckland tour that we took. The very first stop was... Uh, name? Man Manukau Harbour. Uh, uh, Manukau Harbour. I mean, all the names there generally are Maori names. So, this was the Ma Manukau Harbour that... Uh, we visited first. During our uh, West Coast tour of uh, Auckland and uh, Devonport, and also we had been to the Titirangi uh, Cultural, uh, Maori Cultural uh, Center. That is this what is, this is. This is the Titirangi, where they have beautiful sculpture done on uh, just pieces of wood, and uh, they have uh, live uh, demos there. By Maori. And, the, by the Maori uh, tribe. We have about seven, eight people sitting there and they show you how they make all this. And it's beautiful. Even, even the pillars which you see in the store, even those are made by those people. The even, ceiling, the, ceiling. even the ceiling is made by them. And it was beautiful because we spent nearly about uh, one hour there. And it was really amazing. And this was, well, what is the name? I don't know. <laughs> like this animal. This is the, just outside. And uh, on the tree there, yeah, with, on the which tree we, we saw, found uh, it was unusual. So we just took the picture. It was a green colored lizard, which was uh, camouflaging with the leaves. It looks so beautiful. So we took a picture of that also. Then this is the handicraft by the Maori people. In the same center. In the same center, where uh, you know it is a thin sheet of uh, paper on which they have uh, very thin layers of wood stuck on the paper, and uh, we can view it as a lit up picture because from 
the back they have a very powerful light and it was so awesome because they had even uh, scenery is also and i have it in the same yeah, which, place which also means seats the paper is so thin and even the wooden uh, figures that they have stuck there is so thin that you know you can if you light up then you can see very clearly this what this is another yeah. of the artwork one thing which we really enjoyed in new zealand especially in the north island uh this was very very interesting this is the third other one this was and, done by a 11 year old boy and uh, they always used the natural colors and natural um uh, paints uh, paints only okay then the next stop was the what is the name of the waterfall uh waituma this this is the waituma waterfalls which we uh, which we saw when uh, we were passing through uh, the city and we liked it so much so we stopped there and we asked the driver because we wanted to see that for no, at least 10 15 minutes we no we spent that in nearly yeah. 40 minutes there yeah yeah and this is again a part of that west coast tour and when i say west coast it is west coast of auckland so and this is the black and i know kedar also has been there so just like uh, amita so kedar if i bluff keep quiet <laughs> okay so this, uh, this, but this, this is the truth this this much at least i know that this is a black sand beach correct yeah black sand which was only on the western co coast of auckland because elsewhere we had the um, you know the white colored sand on the beach and this particular beach had you know a gray to black there was patches like and that was a very distinct uh, difference which we noticed that is this is the same black same. sand beach yeah with the hills in the background this is another angle yeah yeah then from that uh, location just beyond that black sand beach uh, we went on a hill and from there we could capture a uh, total view of the uh, auckland downtown with that uh, space needle what yeah, you know sky uh, tower sky tower in uh, which which was near our hotel of course actually but it was just two yeah. minutes walk from our uh, ramada but now we are watching it from the other side from the west coast and uh, the hills on which we climbed they are known as the waitemere waitemere range and that uh, view from that uh, hill was so beautiful we could see the whole downtown like a postcard and uh, only thing is that day it was a little hazy yes. uh, the sun had not come out so the picture looks a bit hazy and this is the bridge uh, which takes us from auckland downtown to the west coast of auckland this is another view of the downtown from a distance this tour took us almost one full day okay have about white to so sang na yeah so we had done different tours when we were at auckland and uh, one of the uh, tours was uh, to the glowworm caves at uh, waitomo the name of the village is called waitomo and uh, you know the caves are made of limestone and inside is very humid and i believe uh, they uh, you know the maoris they noticed that uh, there was lot of water there so they used to enter the caves to catch some uh, fish or something and that time they found on the ceiling something you know millions. bright was there and there were millions and millions of uh, glow worms and the green things dots like thing which you see on top 
that those are the um, those are the glowworms which are in colonies like and uh, we get uh, we are taken in a tiny boat about 10 people we go into a boat and then they take you around the full cave in that uh, stream of water and it's so beautiful only thing is they say don't uh, switch on your cameras yeah, right. and also the um, no light. Uh, yeah flashlights are not allowed so they did not allow us to take photographs inside but when we came out we were allowed but it's that's very why, it's that's amazing why, that's why we had to download this picture yeah from their website. this picture we yeah we had to download and this is this is our picture so yeah this is when we are just coming out of the cave and uh, this picture was taken by us and the things the conical things which we see hanging downwards in a triangular shape they are the limestone formations which were formed millions of years back and you know when they become too heavy the tips just fall into the water but even then they are even now it is said they are still developing and as they develop the lower portion drops into the water it's very beautiful and even at times when we are going through the waitomo caves you know it so happens that one of these triangular things you know it comes so very close to our head that we have to duck our head down and you know we have to just escape from it uh, hitting against our head but the waitomo caves was really spectacular because once you enter it you feel as though you are you are inside a theater with a lot of green lights around it's beautiful and uh, the guide was telling us that uh, you know these glowworms are in different stages of their life life cycle so he says uh, if any drop of water falls on your head don't think it is the rain water it could be the lar the larvae they shed their uh, you know the outer skin that may drop on your head so he said no problem it won't have any effect on your skin but it was a very good experience yeah and the whole boat ride inside the caves was about 25 minutes okay now this you know we went to a, a grocery store and we were ha very happy to see, and this was in the month of october so we were very happy to see the mangoes but then suddenly you know we had our attention went to the price and that is it says four dollars fifty cents per each yeah first so, we thought it was per pound but then we realized when we went closer we said oh my god four four dollars fifty cents for one mango whereas here we get it for 99 cents <laughs> and even even that mango i mean it's a very small size mango yeah calypso so the we, name is calypso so we just took the picture and smelled it <laughs> okay they are from there from waitamo we went to rotorua uh, which is also known as this what is this manaki tanga uh, manaki tanga <laughs> as you can see all the names are in maori still and this is the uh, uh, on the way we went to tepuya yes and, and it, uh, it says kia ora which is maori for welcome and uh, this valley is known as wakare ware wa so in other words tai it will tai you know you you have this hydrogen sulfide smell so wakare ta but then you are supposed to say ware wa actually uh, this is a map which shows uh, you the, uh, the region where we have to walk through and just like we have in napa valley here in california there this wakare ware wa and we kept on saying wakare 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 tati because there was strong smell of uh, sulfur and hydrogen sulfide as we walked through sometimes we had to even cover our nose and uh, to the extreme left can you see the geyser that is known as the <clears throat> pohutu geyser which which comes up every once in 15 20 minutes and it goes to a height of nearly about 50 to 60 feet and that is so amazing because 
you know, when it comes up, there is, there's not only the water, but you can actually feel the heat, even though you are several feet away, almost 100 feet away from the geyser. That, of course, it's very beautiful. And um, the only thing which we could not stand was the smell. <laughs> But we have to bear it if we want to see all these beautiful uh, things of nature. And we have a video which we will uh, play later. Yeah, so, this is this is that uh, Pohutu geyser which is coming up, uh, viewed from a distance. We were at a higher level and so we took a picture there. We can see the steam coming up. And uh, another thing about this... Uh, Tepuya is, there is a beautiful uh, Maori cultural center we'll, there. We'll go there. We'll, of course, we'll come to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is the one where they make huge, uh, very huge, almost something like 150 feet uh, tall uh, wooden sculptures. It's done by hand and they use just one instrument for doing all this. They don't have five or six, if not even two instruments. They have just one. And they do it so well and uh, they do it right in front of our eyes. So this was one of the towers they had done. This is about the Wakare Warewa Geyser Terrace. Little okay. more details. Yeah, this is the geyser. The, the, uh, of course, these were smaller in size and uh, you can see there is a small bridge beyond where two people are walking. But after that, there is the ocean. So you can just imagine the ocean is so cool and calm. And this side of the bridge, you have hot, in fact, the hot springs. And uh, uh, as you are walking, you can actually feel the heat and you want to walk away from it. And, and that building is the cultural center. And that ocean water was ice cold. Yeah. Okay, now give me one minute. Okay. So I have to stop sharing now, Piti, if I want to switch. Why stop sharing Kono but share the other application? Okay. First I have to get that. And that is kind of Video the Ketra? No, okay, video. Naka video, video Okay. 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 Both pictures are not adjoins. Oh, it's down. Yes, I know. This to where? Hey, hey, this. Okay. Hmm. Let me do. Then. Uh, Rabo, we... Windows Explorer, this does, sir. Well, oh, okay. So, how many share kar ka, Then, yes. uh, uh, we, why we are not getting this? Uh... New share must be. Hmm. Sorry. Any, anyway, it's okay. Too much, sorry. All I'm saying is yesterday we got the yeah, share, share all, all windows. Right. We are not. Uh, can you see now? By this, okay. okay. Pictures. Right. Yeah. So from uh, after visiting uh, Waitomo Caves and uh, Tepuya. Tepuya, we went to a place known as Paia, where we stayed for two nights because we wanted to visit. Cape Priyanga, which is the northernmost part of North Island of um, New Zealand, or it's to the north of Auckland. 
yeah and uh, we were told at auckland uh, that uh, all the tours which go to the northmost tip of the isle of the north island the northmost point that is called cape rianga uh, r e i n g a that is uh, peninsular uh, and it a uh, peninsula tip uh, there is a lighthouse and uh, we were told at auckland that uh, if we have to go there we have to go only from pahia a small town called pahia because all the bus tours start from there so the previous night we went and stayed at uh, pahia at a lodge and from there the buses pick us up and uh, that was also a very amazing trip uh, because it was to the north of um, auckland where the population keeps on decreasing as we go towards the northmost uh, tip yeah so and this is one of the pastures where we see lot of sheep on the way wherever we go we used to see sheep or cows and lot of greenery okay this is another farm that we found uh, on the way I and mean, these are all the pictures from uh, auckland to pahia we went by bus uh there's a couple of questions uh, there was one question earlier ki kit uh, days trip ashile mano and there's a question now ki tumhi drive kele ki public transport getle mano okay trip okay okay uh, when you said kit days uh, if it is question about new zealand then we spent two weeks in new zealand and after that we spent two weeks in australia then of course we continued on to other countries for another 4 months but uh, as far as driving is concerned we didn't want to take a chance because we are not used to left side driving or i don't know whatever in, also, indian type of driving and, and also the reviews which we read we were told that uh, the rental cars you know suddenly they break down and uh, the assistance uh, does not come in time and moreover we were uh, not very comfortable with the left uh, left side driving so everywhere we had uh, the bookings done before we left from usa see actually um, the distance from auckland to uh, sorry from paia to uh, cape rainga was around 3 hours by bus of course so we went by two, we booked all the tours actually because uh, we didn't want to drive and uh, okay now that uh, we are talking about this i can say that you know all the bookings for all these seven months of uh, tour that uh, travel that we did we had booked i had booked about seven months in advance and that when i say booking that included uh, hotel rooms tour set all the locations and wherever uh, especially in india Uh, where we wanted the car so uh, we booked through uber and even you know I, for example i wanted a car to go from we landed at jaipur state, um, airport at 11:30 in the night and then our hotel was in pushkar or uh, ajmer which are side by side which is about 3 hours drive and i had booked this uber uber 7 so, months in advance but i when i landed in jaipur after 7 months at 11:30 in the night uber car with the driver was waiting for me <laughs> india has changed so much so um, we took same a, thing applies yeah in the in, in the night uh, we could drive to, we, you know we could reach um, ajmer because of the uber anyway that some day maybe we'll talk about india trip that time i'll tell you but all i wanted to say was uh, the planning part we had done about 7 months in advance including all the flights train journeys wherever we did in new zealand and then uh, the uh, bus tours so much so that you know we had booked a, um, a train journey known as trans alpine railway which was about Seven hours trip from uh, Greymouth. From Greymouth to Christchurch, Christchurch, which was seven hours, a uh, seven hours train ride, and um, 
they had asked us to select the menu and book the meals at that time itself. So seven uh, months in advance, we decided that we wanted to have the veggie burger and the rose, uh, whatever, rose yeah. milkshake and whatever, and uh, ch uh, chocolate ice cream, all those things. We'll come to that later. <coughs> we'll come to that yeah. later, but as yeah. far as... Uh, uh, in New Zealand, um, uh, one thing I, I think we forgot to mention is that there are two big islands, right? So the upper, the North Island and the South Island, and which are connected by a very uh, narrow bridge near close to Wellington. And uh, uh, in the North Island, we spent about eight days. And in the South Island, we spent about seven days. And uh, everything, everything was, um, uh, what do you say, advanced booking, everything done from our uh, room, the same room where we are sitting now. So seven months in advance. So October, we started out from uh, San Francisco, but our complete bookings, even the taxi, hotel, everything was done in January itself. So that was one good thing. And in if you anyone happens to go to New Zealand and Australia, there's, you don't have to worry at all because every uh, the minibus comes and picks you up from the hotel where you're staying and uh, you don't even have to ask for a taxi or anything. So that is one good thing about uh, these two countries. Yeah. Yeah. I, I must ask. The question, who is the travel agent? <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. Uh, yes. Why? We, book, we booked, uh, uh, you know, we had a lot of vacation options, vacation ownership options. So uh, we, we used those points of Hilton and Windham and RCI to do the hotel bookings. But uh, we also booked some hotels through booking.com and the tours we booked through Viator, viator.com. Viator yeah. And those were very reliable because although we booked in eight months in advance, when uh, we went there, you know, uh, we had some options. Uh, we had booked both the options and we wanted to cancel one of the options. They agreed readily and refunded the money on the phone itself. And when I talk, talk to them on the phone, and uh, I think we did some 15 tours through Viator, and all of them, uh, uh, you know, they stuck to their word. In a sense, uh, uh, see, Viator is a booking agency, right? But they, these tour operators are small operators in New Zealand and Australia. But even those small operators who had maybe one bus in a small place like Fox Glacier, they, uh, you know, uh, yeah. whatever commitments they met. So we had no problems at all anywhere as far as the travel or stay or even um, food. food, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So that is uh, I, uh, my recommendation if anyone wants to go to Australia, New Zealand, or for that matter in other countries also, uh, if you want to book a tour, book through Viator. They have, first of all, they have very good uh, tours. And more than that, they, their customer service is very good. If you want to change something at the last minute, or if you want to cancel even, they really uh, readily help. Anyway, in the interest of time. Okay, uh, Priti, are there any other questions? Wait, there's a question. Was this la Ken Ashila Muno? I need the other question. Chat uh, oh. Uh, oh, uh, where did you go from? Did you go from India? Muno? But uh, no. no, actually, actually, we went, uh, we flew from San Francisco to Hawaii and Hawaii to New Zealand. Then from uh, New Zealand, as the Sheila was saying, we stayed there for, uh, we okay. traveled there for 15 days. And then from there, we went to Australia, where we went, went to Sydney, Melbourne, Cairns, and a few other smaller places. Mel uh, uh, yeah. And then after, from there, we flew to Thailand. So uh, our starting point was San Francisco. And this was in... We are based in California. So, you know, somebody has logged in late maybe, so I'm just saying that we logged in 
We, everything was done from California. <laughs> oh, California, okay. Okay, 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 okay. We are, uh, we are spent one month in Orlando uh, where we of course okay. went to Disney and all that and in addition we uh, first time in our life we had to stay through a hurricane so that was in the month of September then October we um, 2016 we 17. started this, no, 2016 okay. we started this and we returned after so many countries we returned in uh, March uh, okay. first week of 2017. So anyway, uh, can maybe yeah, this that is the only question, right? Zalda, my question, sir. Pretty. Why, why, why? Okay, okay. Go further. See, these are all the farms that we Pass talked through. about. Yeah, wherever we go, you will see all the greenery, all the cattle farms, and this was uh, the trip from. Paya to Cape Renga, which is three hours. And uh, one thing I want to say about this is, you know, Paya is a small town, maybe uh, 2,000 or something in, in terms of population, and mainly there are hotels because there, it's on the uh, waterfront. And then from here to uh, Cape Renga, we went by tour, again a bus, and after about one hour, total three hours, after about one hour drive, we found that hardly, we could see, hardly see any human beings. It was all cattle or sheep. And then one more thing the guide told us was, you know, there are all these cattle farms which have 200, 300 cows. And the owner, you know, uh, and his wife, they manage the whole farm but they stay at, at the Auckland and they don't even visit this farm. Uh, farm every day. They go once in a week and what happens is they have trained one of the cows as the leader. They provide of course a lot of uh, water in tanks to last a week and of course the um, grazing is all from the pastures. Uh, yeah, pastures. But the you know, they uh, make a group of 30 or 50 cows and there is a leader trained for, from the, those cows. And the job of the leader is to lead the pack at sunrise and take them around to graze. And half an hour before sunset, the leader brings all the cows back to the cow shed. So very much disciplined. Very much disciplined, and everyone follows the leaders. Follow the leader. Yeah. So uh, that is one thing we found very strange, and that is why the owners have to visit only once in a week just to make sure that everything is all right. Otherwise, they are doing some uh, daytime jobs in Auckland, in addition to having these farms. Okay, this was uh, this is in the in, in Pahia, Pahia Harbor. Okay, now on the, uh, on, the we, we, on the way to Cape Reanga, you know there are uh, you know there actually the, the bus takes a sixty mile ride on the beach and. Um, then on the way, they you know that some place you know the name. Yeah, uh. Tepaki. Yeah, there's a there's a, a strip of land uh, which is parallel to the ocean and, on the beach uh, on the west coast, and it is called Tepaki. The beach is called Tepaki, and there you have huge, very huge sand dunes which are formed by the winds, bringing sand to this place, and you know, there is a, a sport which goes on there, which is called sandboarding and also called as bodyboarding. So, you know, they have flat uh, plastic, uh, you know, rafts like, 
and uh, yeah, boarding yeah, boards. They, right? Yeah, they are huge boards. A skating and, board. Yeah, and so 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 uh, you know they uh, uh, parked our buses just in front of the sand dunes. Then uh, whoever is interested, not at the two of us, of course, uh, got down from the bus and climbed these dunes with the boards in their hands, and then. Let's see the next picture. See, then they uh, get the boards ready and they slide down, you know, yeah. the sand dunes. We have a video we'll show separately. Maybe at the window. No, we'll show later. Okay, we'll show later. All the videos so will be shown they, later. Yeah, this is how, you know, they um, lie down on the sand, uh, the skateboards and slide down the sand dunes. At, and then it's at such a height and uh, um, angle that you know by the time they reach the ground level they may be traveling at 35 40 miles per hour another funny part is when they are walking uphill with the board in their hand many of them you know they slip and they come down but they never give up they again go and halfway they slip, they come down. So it was real, you know, when we are watching, it's real fun to see them coming up, go up, uh, go up and then coming down. Uh, some people just drop the boards, so they, come, they have to come down to collect the boards. So this lady, this is the lady who came from that uh, yeah. height. She's the same person. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Then uh, this is Cape Rienga, which is, yeah. This is uh, Cape Rienga and uh, this is the last point of the northernmost point of the North Island. Okay. okay After, yeah. And this point is spectacular because if you're standing in front of that lighthouse, imagine, and you're facing the ocean, you can see two different colors of, on your right, you'll see the uh, Tasman Sea, uh, Tasman uh, Ocean, and on the, your left, you will see the Pacific Ocean. And they say that the Tasman is quite warm waters and Pacific is relatively cold. So there is a sort of, uh, you know, uh, some activity going on in the water and you can see the uh, waves moving in opposite direction. So that is something which the guide said, please stand here and watch carefully. So some waves are going left, some waves go right. And that happens only at Cape, um, Cape Rienga. And uh, um, in Maori language, it is also called Te Rerenga Vairunga, which means, I believe, when uh, the pers when the, in New Zealand, the Maori tribe believes when they die, you know, the body, the spirits, you know, they separate soul. from the, the soul separates from the body. It comes to this point and then it enters the ocean, the soul. So that is their belief. Okay. Yeah. But when we went, our soul was still in our body. <laughs> and the name of this peninsula, which we are seeing in the picture is it's connected to the mainland on our side only by a thin narrow path so you know you have to you feel slightly giddy because on three sides you have water and only that path yeah, leads from our bus to that lighthouse you see this this path yeah that is about. the path yeah it's very narrow and uh, um, you know some sometimes you feel giddy when you see water all around like yeah but and uh, the name of this pen yeah this is the path and you uh, go like this and then go down there is the lighthouse and the tip yeah you can see the tip of the lighthouse there also right on top yeah yeah this is on the left which is the pacific ocean yeah right? this is the pacific ocean this is the lighthouse and this is uh, just, uh, you know, people walking from the bus towards the lighthouse. This is one of the just people. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, yeah, one more thing is uh, mm. the name of this peninsula is called Aupori. A-U-P-O-U-R-I. 
of course it was a bit uh, because it's in maori language it's a bit uh, the thing difficult to pronounce yeah pronounce and it's believed uh, it, sorry it's true uh, this highway one on which we were driving from uh, pahia it actually ends at this point so this is the last point of highway one so that is one nice thing you know which we observed here okay. Okay, and then uh, just next to the. Okay, and this is the you know um, signboards sign sign where it says you know okay this way is the Los Angeles this is Tropic of Capricorn Sydney London and South Pole South Pole <laughs> we, are, we are very near the South Pole. There's a sign for Kanyakumari. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was, but it was uh, so far that we couldn't, uh, and we didn't have binoculars, so we couldn't <laughs> capture that. <laughs> no, I don't. Unfortunately, there was no sign of. But there, India. okay, I'll show yeah. one more. See, it shows equator this way and South Pole, and London. there's a place known as Bluff, which I do most of the time, <laughs> <laughs> and London. Sydney, Tokyo, but no Indian name, no unfortunately. Indian name. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, we'll go to the next one now. Again, this is this different angle of the same thing. Okay, then we came back to Paya, and this was our this, hotel. This is the hotel where we stayed. Where we stayed. Uh, in front of this it was a very small hotel but uh, it was very neat clean and uh, facing the waterfront and uh, the road which you see in front of our hotel it uh, runs to almost on either side it runs about seven miles this side and seven miles that side so we used to enjoy our walks in the evening and as usual the manager was indian yeah <laughs> john like a silver <laughs> but uh, next to uh, you know that full line there are a lot of restaurants restaurants and you have a wide choice and luckily Not maybe they know that uh, many indians come there who are vegetarians so we had a good choice not all you can eat buffet but something was there <laughs> Okay, this is uh, in front of our uh, hotel room actually. This is the Pahia Beach. And there was a waterfall known as... Uh, Horuru, Horuru, Horuru. Horuru Waterfall. Which was just uh, about three miles from our hotel in the... just outside Pahia town. And I don't know, there was some... Um, belief or significance especially for Chinese people because we found whenever we went they used to come in hordes in buses and uh, sit there around the uh, in a place where Sheila is sitting uh, for hours and meditate yeah the, in fact there was a full bus load bus, of yeah. uh, Asian people and uh, sitting Chinese, there uh, Chinese. Chinese. Right, Chinese uh, and they used to do meditation there and this waterfalls is a very famous waterfall there Horuru Haruru Falls. This is the place. Harare Mai. Harare Mai. Which means welcome. I don't know any every word they write. It's just they, they say it means welcome. <laughs> this I just skip again. through, yeah, because yeah. this is that. This Haru. is the beach in front of our hotel. Sanjay uh, Chaya, I mean, Hanga Watson Bastali. You know, and sometimes when the restaurants were uh, uh, packed with people, we used to take the food and sit here and eat. It was very nice. And in the evenings, they used to light up uh, that boardwalk completely. It used to be lit up. So it was such a very uh, spectacular, you can say. Every evening. I'll show you the video later. Uh, Kunal is saying that if you remove the R with, uh, replace the R with uh, N, and T with the L, it becomes Honolulu. And Milin Mom in the chat window said this looks like Hawaii. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 
Okay. Uh, I'll play that uh, video, one or two videos now. But Preeti, again, uh, I hope I can share. <laughs> See, this is first one is uh, okay. I have to share again now. Eh? Why at the video application? Okay, open well actually. This lamp. Okay, okay, yeah. This is uh, all the green, you know, uh, next to the road, it's all green, green, and cows and sheep. No, Hello? no, we must be. I don't know. This is enough. This is enough. Eight seconds. Okay, I'll share again then. Huh. Every file I have to share with the body. And the Pura video is like a Vatu Daketwa. So you can share the video application and show. Three four okay. videos and he okay. Okay. go back to uh, picture sharing. Okay. At this way. Why? Why this time? Exam this time. Okay. At the move karna pade this time. Yeah. So this is the road from uh, Kaya to K Prayanga. Which, as I said, you know, no human beings in sight for at least two hours. Only cattle and uh, sheep, sheep. Horses. <laughs> it was uh, beautiful, actually. Very nice. Okay. This is that uh, false water. Yeah. Okay, now, you can see now, eh? Can this is the stuff. Okay. Yeah. This is that sand dune. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear the sound also? Why I got that? It's someone laughing. Okay, once more. Let me play it once more. This was really enjoyable because wow. because we were not doing it. This was after a 60 mile ride. Uh, the bus oh, yeah. was, uh, yeah, 60 mile bus was actually riding on the beach for 60 miles. And then we came across these sand dunes where we stopped for about one and a half hours because uh, the climbing was itself difficult for all the interested people. Okay, this later maybe. Okay, this I'll, I'll play this now and uh, this is the Milfred Sound cruise. Oh, oh no. Yeah. After Cape Rienga was over, uh, we came back to the uh, Auckland airport and flew down to the South Island. And we stayed at Hilton uh, in a town called Queenstown. And from there, we did uh, various tours. And this is one of them, which is called uh, Milford Sound Cruise. Actually, this was exactly, almost exactly like Alaska, you know, uh, so where we could do uh, the cruise and then of course there were uh, glaciers. So we, uh, frankly, we did the cruise, but we never bothered any glaciers. It's so very beautiful because there were uh, waterfalls also around. At least some 40 50 waterfalls were there on either side, left and right. This the Noah. Eh? Hmm? 
बोले ऐकत नव है यस यस ओके थैंक यू and there are a lot of migratory birds which come and have their uh, nests very close to these uh, waterfalls just like alaska again okay this yeah uh, maybe now that i'm sharing the videos let me share the complete this but this was from uh, queenstown from queenstown we went by gondola to the top of the mountain there was a restaurant there and uh, you know this person on the way we found that this person was doing uh, bungi i am i'm hoping that it's called bungi i don't know maybe kedar can guide me yeah he is already planning to go bungee jumping <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah bungee oh, jumping kunal how are you yeah these are the gondolas which bring us up the hill Uh, up the mountain, not hill, uh, right from Queenstown, right up, and there there is a very huge uh, restaurant. So we had our uh, lunch there, and that comes in the package, you know. And we spent the whole day here because we get beautiful view of the uh, whole town, Queenstown. अभी Yeah, I'm just uh, sharing uh, the next set of pictures. So it will take a minute or so because I have to stop sharing and share again. In while uh, Kedar, you can plan your trip yeah. to for the jump. He's already saying, "Okay, we are taking a year off." Are you cool? ओके दिस वाज द दिस तो वह है ये आया कुछ कह रहे हैं कि कैन यू सी पिक्चर्स नाउ बाय पिक्चर्स बाय दिस का या या फोटोग्राफ्स यस या ओके या सो दिस वाज अ प्लेस फ्रॉम ऑन द वे फ्रॉम वाटरमो केव्स to back to paya no king Wait, auckland no, auckland, auckland, auckland auckland there is a actually small village like i mean it say set for the hobbiton movies hobbit movies this place is known as hobbiton and shila will give more details but i just want to say that uh, this was built after uh, on the same site as lord of the rings um say uh, set movie set, set. Movie set. so we'll see that but before that focus on this one right? yeah i this I this just, this picture that you are seeing is the cafeteria, cafeteria of that hobbit on yeah uh, just a minute back um, someone uh, sudhir ani kavita just said that uh, do you have any pictures of hobbit on because they are big lord of rings fans yeah we yes, have we have we lots have. of them <laughs> yeah this is the uh, buses which bring us to the uh, i mean take you around almost the 13000 acres of uh, hobbiton land and uh, it's a family owned and uh, it belongs to a family the alexander family and they bought this land only because it was very cheap and also they wanted to do uh, cattle raising and they least expected that one day you know the producer uh, of this uh, lord, lord of, the of the rings would approach him and he was having i believe an aerial aerial uh, view of this uh, complete uh, area which is called mata mata and when he was uh, taking the aerial view because he wanted to see which hillock 
or which pasture would be right for the shooting of his movie lord of the rings and um his name is peter jackson and director uh, he's the yeah main director of the movie and when he was having the aerial view he liked this particular hillock of course there are many families with lot of farmland here but this particular uh, hillock you know uh, appealed to him because there were lot of cows on it lot of sheep around and that is what exactly he wanted for the movie so he and approached and rolling, the rolling, the rolling hills. hills with lot of greenery around lot of trees too and that's why he approached the family and uh, then they made a deal for uh, shooting the movie there yeah they, uh, our tour bus comes up to this place and we are supposed to get down and get into their hobbiton buses they don't allow private vehicles uh, inside so this is again we are, we are coming out of the cafeteria or the main it that's also the main reception center at hobbiton uh, and this the now yeah. next few pictures you will see various uh, small houses built for this character they hobbits. are called hobbits and uh, they are made of uh, some uh, material called polyurethane which is lined in the inner can you uh, can you hang it later hmm. see here this complete thing is uh, a part of the hillock where a cave is dug into and this was all done only for the movie lord of the rings and when the cave is uh, cut through then they line this upper portion so that it does not fall down with that strong material and then they make all this woodwork the door the windows and and all these plants they have you know the the film people there were about 500 people who were doing all this uh, uh, decoration for the movie and uh, it took them nearly about 3 years just to make the set yeah and these are called hobbits you know when the guide takes you around he will not say cave he will say hobbits, hobbits. He, he no he says hobbits these are all different uh, yeah sets they have different. all the doors are different colored one is red one is yellow one is blue and it looks very cute you know especially children they will love to run around here and this was supposed to be a workshop of one of the characters with all the tools and this you know sign of wet paint over there i'll just uh, skip through all these pictures because they just show the different even these plants were grown only for that purpose because the original owner had different uh, trees like see this at the back is their main complex and then uh, we had all those sets right, thanks sanjay hmm. this is the uh, mill where they have the um, you know the millet and all those uh, grains you know they are ground into powder so i believe in the movie they show this and uh, this is called the mill the ground mill and this is the lake which was also already Created. there yeah mm. and then it was cleaned up and uh, we have all these tiny tiny hills which look so beautiful and after the movie was uh, shot and after the shooting was over i believe uh, the owners were just planning you know to demolish. You know, uh, demolish everything but just in time the hobbiton people approached the no, hobbiton the people who are managing the site now no the hmm. hobbiton trilogy uh, hmm. trilogy no, okay. the, that was shot yeah that was also shot there so just in time they came and they requested that nothing be uh, demolished and so the hobbiton trilogy also was shot here okay now this tree that you are seeing this uh, is different can you someone say what is different in this this is not a natural tree at all this whole tree is artificial the trunk branches even the leaves 
they are all artificial because they wanted you know when they shoot the movie over years they wanted no change in that they didn't want the leaves to fall off on monday and the fresh leaves on some other day so what they have done is they created a artificial tree and i was told that this is made out of plastic and then these leaves are stitched on to it all the branches on the branch. so once in 3 years they change all the leaves they get the fresh plastic leaves from taiwan and individually stitch onto all those branches so uh, if you just look at this you will never know that it is not a natural tree or natural leaves so sorry they, you will uh, not know that they are artificial it looks so natural so once in 3 years they change all that they, they remove all the leaves which are stitched there and then they get the new leaves and stitch it back stitch them back so that is the significance of this tree tree uh there was a private question that uh, are you allowed to go inside the hobbits mm -hmm. yes yes we have pictures yeah, i will show are, you we are coming to that See, this is that artificial tree. Okay, from here, there's no way you will know it's not a natural tree. If we are even allowed to take pictures uh, from the, you know, the hobbits. Ted, you wanted to say something about this. Yeah, this is uh, one of the ferns that was growing there. because it was so beautiful i clipped it from beneath the and it's a very big fern almost uh, 10 to 15 feet coconut tree like like a fire see these are all individual this is the granary that's the yeah. granary yeah this is these are the grains which they uh, supposed to store for the movie movie not for the movie. characters characters yeah I skip through. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, I don't know. Someone's question was, "Can can we enter?" Yes. Yeah, we can enter, but there's nothing inside. <laughs> Only one of the places, you know, had a kitchen where we found dali toy and uh, ten lakh of curry. This, this is yeah, yeah. This is the background of the you know the, yeah. all those. There's and, a cattle farm there yeah. also. And at the back on the hillock, you see all these cows. They they are in the movie also, but they belong to the Alexander family. And I I uh, I was told that there are thirteen thousand cows, thirteen thousand cows, and almost about nine thousand sheep belonging to the same family. and the uh, below you see the uh, well, minute, below yeah below you see the smoke coming out of that house that is the cafeteria we saw earlier yeah we saw earlier that is the tree that is artificial the tree. tree yeah beautiful flowers adorn every hobbit it's very beautiful and you you can see the size yeah i mean this is this picture is taken mainly to show the size of the door no. and the cottage is it okay if i skip fast because of in the interest of yeah, time because they are almost because all are, the same we yeah. are still in the new zealand yeah there are, yeah there are about 37 such uh, homes uh, which are called hobbits and uh, there are 37 of them and all are well maintained and well painted once in 3 years uh, yeah these are the clothes belonging to this characters right yeah which is used in the movie we were told <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah. So the Hobbiton is done. So. That is the map of that yeah. uh, Hobbiton set. The dotted line shows where we have to walk through. Yes, we are done. <laughs> so we had so I many. I mean, it was so nice. We took about 200 pictures there. So sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we'll have children okay. today, so we kept, we did not uh, delete many of them. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. this is the wrong this place. Is Auckland, <laughs> this, is, this is not that oh, is the oh, wrong oh, place. Oh, that oh, is oh, when we arrived in oh, Auckland. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, this is the handsome. Sky this, Tower. Yeah, this is the Sky Tower that we talked about by night. By night. Uh, taken from our. Uh, of course, this uh, is our Swami. <laughs> From our hotel, uh, Ramada. Okay, now uh, again I have to unshare and share. Give me one minute, two minutes, maybe three minutes. Next place was called mm. Queenstown. Right. Queenstown, right? Next stop. Yeah, Queenstown. We showed. Uh, yeah, yes. Gondola, that girl, right? Milford Sound is finished. Okay, let me share the picture itself. Mm -hmm. Ah, box creation. Now, how do I go back? Mm -hmm. Share. Mm -hmm. Just one minute, I'm having problems getting in again. Oh, hang on. Okay. I told you, I just crossed 35, so it's taking some time for me. Can you see this now? Can you see? It's not the explorer, this stuff. Huh? Why? But uh, with the plane, no? Eh? Why? Why? Okay. I'm, uh, it's taking time to open. Can you see the plane full screen now or no? No, no. Oh, I have to share again. Sorry, don't know why it's doing that. No, it's okay. Yesterday, you... during the trial run, we were showing all the windows. <laughs> yeah. Can you see now? By this time, full okay. screen. Yeah, yeah. This is the plane we went. Uh, I mean, after Hobbiton, we went back to Auckland and flew to Queenstown. Queenstown. This was from the plane. Yeah. All the mountains and. This is just before entering Queenstown. Queenstown is a very beautiful uh, uh, town. And uh, if anyone goes to New Zealand, please don't miss Queenstown. It's very spectacular. <laughs> Again, yeah. this was the cruise. To Milford Sound. Milford Sound. To see the glacier and also fjord lands. There are a lot of fjords. Fjords are, uh, you know, deep valleys which are uh, cowed by the melting of the glaciers uh, in between the mountains. So it's almost like uh, making a slice of uh, uh, you know, a slice of cake cut from the big cake, you know, so the fjord lands, they run deep into the range. See, there are two things you should, uh, yeah, which are interesting here, all these mountains and this hairstyle <laughs> on the right. 
Okay. So this is the hotel we were staying. This is Double Tree by Hilton in Queensland. Queenstown. 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 Sorry, Queenstown. And we'll go fast. Okay. This is the uh, main attraction here. Is this skyline gondola? As I, I think we saw where. Uh, one of the pictures where one of the videos where somebody was doing the bungee jumping. Yeah. So that this is the place there. where you take the gondola to go up and there is a um, right on top of the mountain. There is a restaurant with the, with all the yeah. nice views. So this is the gondola we take. And as you can see, you know, they um, take this bikes also yeah. up on the gondolas. Because there's a lot of uh, the you know, mountain biking on top. So this is on the way. And this. there are a lot of trails also. Yeah. Either you can go walking. Uh, of course, that uh, you okay. have to, for experts like. Uh, and uh, uh, also uh, there are uh, tracks where you can go down the hill by your cycle. Yeah. So this is the, you know, this picture shows up the height to which you go on the mountain. Yeah. in the gondola and then once you go up you know this is the kind of view you will have and here if you see is the place where that bungee or bungee yeah. i don't yeah. know how to bungee bungee pronounce it bungee. even bungee. but that is the place you can see now eh? you can see pictures right hello yes can okay you? okay oh, yeah okay yeah so these are the views we are having once you go up and that is the place where we can have the lunch lunch which is included in the package package and uh, both of us are vegetarians but still we could manage and this is the view from the top see all See. this, you know, this this person, for example, this gondola, for example, is having three bikes attached. So I believe there is some very good um, opportunity for mountain biking there. That's the part of the, the bar attached to the restaurant. And we are, after the lunch, we are going back. I'll, I'll, I'll try to move as fast as possible. This is from the topmost yeah. spot on the mountain, just outside the uh, restaurant. And this is uh, candy shop. <laughs> candy shop within the restaurant. I mean, next to the restaurant, on top. Okay, uh, from Queensland, then uh, we. It took a cruise. Actually, from Queensland, our next stop was. I mean, that was sort of we are coming to the end of New Zealand. So, oh, sorry, Fox. Cliff. Yeah. So we had to go from Queenstown to Christchurch and take a flight from there to <laughs> Melbourne. So on the way, you know, the uh, we took this path, uh, this uh, road route where. You know, we had to, we took a bus from Queenstown to a place known as Fox Glacier. You can see the glacier at the back here. Of course, the glacier has retreated so much that, uh, you know, um, there's not much we can see from outside, uh, from a distance. But, you know, this is the place where we had to, uh, where our uh, car dropped us. And we had to walk about seven miles. This is the trail to the uh, Fox Glacier. And uh, the guide was telling us that uh, the guide was telling us that at one time there was uh, the glacier was right up to here. Yeah. Yeah, right up to here, but now it has receded and it has by gone. seven miles. Yeah, it's gone back by seven miles, and this is the only thing which we can see out of, of the glacier. And to see that from a close distance, we had to walk from this point where I'm standing here, right there, which was almost seven miles. And it's not a straight road. We, there are a lot of rocks and ups and downs. Like this. And there's one place where we have to cross a, a stream also. 
and finally we come near the glacier and we find what is left of the glacier. glacier. Okay, from Fox Glacier, we went by bus to a place called Grey Mouth. Grey Mouth. Grey Mouth, and uh, that, that is the station where the Trans Alpine train uh, starts. That's the starting point. So from here to Christchurch. So from here to uh, Christchurch, which is on the east coast, whereas Grey Mouth is on the west coast, and since that island is quite a narrow island, it takes only about seven hours to go by this trans alpine train from grey mouth to christchurch east, west coast to east coast west coast to east coast but the train goes very slowly at points where it becomes extremely amazing or if there is a very scenic uh, views yeah. and if the people want to take pictures the driver of the uh, he actually stops the train and asks us to take the pictures and it has got a on top, it has got a glass top, you know, see-through, you know, where we can take pictures from there. That is the train, you know, yeah. Transalpine train. Yeah. See, this from, first of all, there are very large windows, so you can have a good view of the thing. And also, as uh, Sheila was saying, there, there are some coaches with the glass top. And on the way, this was a, one of the dams which we crossed or we passed by. And this picture is taken from the moving train. This is the interior. And continuously we have, uh, you know, a narration done by, uh, you know, pre uh, yeah, pre-recorded ones. And uh, it gives you in uh, different languages. So you can select the language and as you're traveling, it tells you which mountain you're crossing or which river you're crossing and you get all the information. And, uh, and I, when I, you feel hungry, there is a cafeteria yeah, inside. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, actually I could get the commentary in Konkani also, not from their system, but from the person next to me. <laughs> See, these are all the views from the train. And then they stop at a station again, as uh, Sheila was saying, yeah. for us to take the pictures. And uh, okay, you want to talk about the food part? Then. Yeah. Uh, and since we had all already ordered the food seven months in advance, so. Uh, you know, once you enter the train and it's moving, we don't have to go and order from the cafeteria, which is in the center of the train. And uh, they, come and uh, they, they themselves come and uh, serve us. And uh, we can eat. Uh, only thing is we are not Ill allowed to eat at the place where we sit. You know, there is one particular uh, dining, uh, chair. dining chair, car, car, uh, dining, dining car. car, where uh, we have to go and eat our food there. And that is also having glass windows, so you can take pictures even as you are eating. And the glass top. Yes. Only, only thing was, you know, we, as, uh, I keep saying, we ordered this seven months before our journey. Only thing we didn't know was that they cook and keep it in the refrigerator the day we order. <laughs> um, there was a question from Deepa, ki how long was the train ride move? Yeah. It was about. Uh, uh, it was exactly seven hours twenty minutes from a place called Grey Mouth, which is near Fox Glacier, and uh, it's on the west coast. So from west coast, you are coming to east coast through a beautiful uh, land, alpine. And, uh, and it's alpine uh, by alpine. a train called uh, Trans Alpine Train, and it travels very slowly, so that even stops at certain places to take pictures and it takes exactly 7 hours and 20 minutes to reach but, uh, Christchurch. But that was the train part. But actually, you know, from uh, we started from uh, Queenstown. Uh, it was about a 5 hours bus ride to Fox Glacier where, where we stayed overnight because we wanted to go and watch the glacier. Hmm. And then again, next morning we took another bus which was another 5 hours ride to the station Grey yeah, Mouth. From where you start this trans 
Alpine, Alpine. Uh, train journey, which as uh, Sheila was saying, which take, takes seven hours, 20 minutes to reach Christchurch. So these are all the views on the way. And then finally we reached Christchurch and where we stayed at Double Tree overnight because uh, it was too late to take the flight because we were going to, from Christchurch, we were going to um, Melbourne. Melbourne, via so, Sydney. Via Sydney. So that was our last day in New Zealand. And uh, after uh, this is the um, Double Tree in uh, Christchurch. And this, then we took the, uh, we went to Christchurch Airport to take the flight, Emirates flight we took to Sydney. Sydney. From uh, Christchurch to Sydney, Sydney, we went by Emirates. And from Sydney to Melbourne, then we went by Qantas. This is Emirates. And uh, Emirates had a camera on the tail. So we could, this is a, our plane actual takeoff from um, Christchurch. Christchurch, which they showed on our uh, screen in front of our seat. And with all the details you know, while taking off. So this is the end of our New Zealand. So Preeti Kedar, it's already 320. And uh, you have the knitting session starting at four o'clock. So what should we do? Shall Stop. we uh, shall we do Australia on some other some day? other day? Because it's we'll wait for our chance. Um. Okay. So at the you have forty five minutes, then. Nee, forty five minutes. Nee, just ten, fifteen minutes. Uh, oh, oh, why three thirty? No. Why? Okay. Why? Maybe Australia. Well, other questions. Day. Thing, yeah. Any questions? Maybe. Yeah. If there are any questions, yeah. I can answer. We can answer the questions, but uh, Australia will do some other day because it will take the same amount of time. Uh, Papa, can you stop sharing so we can see everybody? Huh. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Uh, everyone, you can just turn on your videos. Uh, any, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to unmute and ask. Okay. To me, type yeah. You can just ask. Yeah, this is Amita. I don't have a question, but I, since I was there only like uh, six months ago, it just brought back a, amazing memories. New Zealand, I mean, I've seen so many places around the world, but I always say that if I didn't live in California, the other place I would live in is uh, New Zealand. It is, I mean, if you see, if you look at it, it is unbelievable. Pictures don't do justice. Yeah. yeah. That uh, Alpine, Alpine's uh, train is just outstanding and the scenery is I mean unbelievable you think you've seen the best and then a, a couple of hours later you come across something say oh my god that is even better than what it is before yes. and uh, it is it is one of the most beautiful country and and the other thing I also want to add I don't I mean you I don't know how you all did it I did mine partly through a, a travel agent I mean a, a guided tour and partly on my own but it is so geared for tourism. It's unbelievable. It is seamless. You don't even get physical tickets. Can you believe it? You yeah. just get, you get a confirmation email, no tickets. Yes. And you just go show up and your name is on there and everything. Your luggage is taken care of. I mean, literally from bus to train to flight, your luggage is taken yeah. care of also. So, but besides, it's one of the most beautiful countries I have uh, ever ever visited and um, you know you really brought back memories it was it's just uh, unbelievable country yeah. only thing is so so about it is the food food is average very very average yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but you know you don't go for the food and uh, uh, it's not like asian countries or somewhere where you go for the food but yeah i mean lovely you brought up a beautiful memories thank you yeah, but maybe amita you, what you can do is you can stay six months in california and six months in new zealand you know, that was one of my uh, plans that not, uh, but then I, I this first said, I'm going to live in Africa. Then I said, I'm going to live in Japan. Then I said, I'm going to live in New Zealand. So, and then I gave up. I said, okay, I'm going to spend the next years while I can physically travel to see the world and come back home. <laughs> yeah. Now on the, on the food front, I just want to say one thing. We actually, there was a surprise waiting for you, uh, for us yeah. in one of, on the way, you know, while driving in it. Yeah. 
we stopped for the food and uh, it was a small joint you know uh, new zealand mainly only new zealanders working there and there was the usual new zealand food which is kept there which was kept there so we were just you know we spent few minutes wondering what we can touch or eat and uh, suddenly a lady appeared you know she came out of the kitchen and uh, i i just asked her uh, you know i am i just told her i am a vegetarian so she said aapko kya chahiye samosa chahiye yeah, yeah. And she was right. an Australian, right? And, uh, New Zealander. Sorry, New Zealander. Yeah. 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 So she asked us, "Aapko samosa chahiye?" In pure Hindi, you know. Yeah. And uh, she said, uh, uh, "We said okay, but then you know our bus may go." She said, "No, no, usko to mai rok lungi. Oh wow! Aapke, uh, yeah. Mai aapke liye fresh samosa bana ke lati hu. Aap yahan wait karna." Wow. And she made fresh samosas, very nice uh, samosas uh, for us with the chutney also. And then really? when she, uh, she wow. came and gave gave to us, and after that we, I just asked her, "Oh, have you been to India?" She said, "I have never stepped out of this my village in my life." Then I said, "How do you know Hindi?" She said, "I was so fascinated by the language that I learnt it online." <laughs> Wow! How to speak? Yeah. And <laughs> even uh, there was not a single mistake in the way she was talking. The accent. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing which you I did, which you didn't touch on, touch upon, and I don't know if you all got a chance. It depends on season. Is were you there for the shearing season? Yeah. yeah because that yeah. is an amazing yeah. experience. Is unbelievable. We have, a, we have a video only thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we did that. You know, we in. Uh, Uh, right. Philip Island, Australia, not in New Zealand. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, what that's is, another that, amazing, Amita? amazing. Ex- huh? What is that? <coughs> the shearing, shearing of sheep. Yeah. Sheep shearing. So that uh, sheepa gal hai asna. Oh, okay. 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 Ok
Yeah. So it was a little chill, but we just needed one uh, one sweater, you know. It uh. wasn't that bad. If, I mean, it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I think. But uh, but I loved uh, New Zealand. I mean, all what you said yes. is so true. I mean, it's so beautiful. I mean, I would retire. I love to retire there. <laughs> Why? And in fact, when I, we had gone to New Zealand, but it's so beautiful. And yeah. very less people. It is like being in quarantine. Yeah. Huh. And he, <laughs> well, and it is and so scenic. In fact, I was telling Preeti that next trip we have to do is New Zealand. We just love that. Yes. I just love yes. that place when I went there. Yeah. yeah. And Deepa, be specific. Retire at forty-five. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, you know, there there were so few people on the road. That if Kedar goes, maybe you can organize some more, uh, you know, <laughs> online events there. <laughs> yeah, strong contrast, uh, you know, between New Zealand and uh, Melbourne, Sydney. Thoi, when we went to Sydney, especially, my God, there were so many people. We used to say, uh, uh, we oh, have to get out of this place, we have to get out of this place. <laughs> and the best part is, people, Indian Sasathai, you will not feel like you're yeah. gone out of India. It's yeah. beautiful there. Yeah, but Keynes was very nice. Because the uh, same yeah. thing like New Zealand, where very few people and the yes. Great Barrier Reef and all, it was amazing. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. And and I I remember I, we had got a frozen pizza because we had lived in a uh, bed and breakfast place, right? So uh, we got a frozen pizza, which was tandoori pizza. And it was the best pizza we ever had. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There was a question about cost. Cost, see, in terms of cost, I really can't talk because uh, all our uh, uh, hotel stays were, uh, you know, using points. And uh, um, yes, we had to pay only for, and places, even even uh, some of the tours. No, only did. places like, uh, you know, Fox Glacier, where the hotel was very small. Yeah, I'm not able to do And uh, only for a day. We and we stayed there only for one night. And then just uh, uh, it is it's an expensive place for a tourist it is everything yeah. is expensive yeah, food is. is expensive you get value for what you get for your money is also not that much but it's worth every penny you spend i i i, I really don't know because we paid only five dollars for two samosas <laughs> no really <laughs> yeah yeah but but, the, uh, but as uh, we showed the mangoes were uh, 4 .50. yeah 4 dollars 50 cents we thought it was for a pound and when we went very close to the box we were shocked ek ek mango ka <laughs> yeah but, that's uh, oh it's uh, nearly 3:30 at the way my knitting session will start <laughs> thank you okay thank you if everyone no one has any question <laughs> let us end the session here <laughs> Okay, so thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next Thank week you, it is, uh, next week it will be Huma Oskete who will be and Mekala Hoskote who will be taking us on a trip to Spain. Okay. So we'll await that uh, trip next okay. week. Nice, nice. So now uh, this knitting is at four o'clock now. Eh? Bye, bye. Knitting oh. is at four o'clock. Yeah. Four ki four thirty. No four four. Oh four. four. Oh okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I will go because I have to prepare the. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.